This is a really important time for parents to be supporting their children's learning. Schools will be sending through activities and worksheets, and there are some other really helpful and free resources out there, such as those from STEM Learning at stem.org.uk for science, computing, maths, and DT. But there's no substitute for a teacher in the room, and right now, that's mum and dad for most children. Now that may feel a little bit daunting, but one big advantage of being a parent is that you are already an expert on your child. You know better than anyone how your child thinks and behaves. So for example, one of the first challenges that any teacher might face is engaging the learner. If you are having difficulty getting your child engaged with learning, then think about the sorts of things that already engage them, but also why that might be. The sorts of things that the brain's reward system responds to and makes us want to approach are things like praise, tokens for achievement, novelty, curiosity, having some element of choice in a task or just sharing attention with another to the task, possibly online with a friend. Try to get the elements that engage your child combined with the learning as closely as possible. So offering incentives and rewards to complete work like being able to play a game afterwards can help. But if you make the game part of the learning itself, that will probably be better for the learning. Try if possible to avoid negative emotions. It's much better to arrange an activity so that your child wants to do it than push them into an activity that they're not engaged with. When a child starts accumulating negative emotions around an activity, that can cause an aversive response to the whole topic. Your own emotions are also important. You and your child each have a mirror neuron system in your brains that helps you experience each other's emotions and thoughts as if they were your own. That's an extra good reason to keep familiar with their work so you can feel comfortable, interested and wanting to learn more about it too because those are the emotions that you want your child to have about their learning. And if you can find learning activities for your child that you enjoy as well, then all the better. That makes it much more likely that your child will enjoy those activities as well. If, for example, you want your child to want to learn an instrument or to be creative, then show an interest in learning an instrument yourself or get the paints out with them. Enjoy yourself. Show that you're enjoying yourself. Your child will sometimes reach out to you because they're stuck on something that they don't understand the meaning of, and you may not be quite sure about it either. This can be a critical moment, and it's really important how you respond. Don't ignore it. Get involved. Mirror how you want your child to respond to a challenge. Be interested in the challenge. Don't panic. By understanding a little bit about learning processes, you can help here, even if you don't actually have a clue about the subject itself. Because for the child to understand new knowledge or a new question, they have to make a connection with what they already know. They have to connect it back to their prior knowledge. And this isn't always easy for children because their brains are developing. So they will need a bit of extra support in doing that. You can help them by encouraging them to go back to what they've learned already and to talk about it with you. Now that's good in itself for consolidating that old knowledge, but it may also help get them unstuck on the new knowledge because all new knowledge has to build on the old knowledge to be meaningful. And just activating that old knowledge in the brain makes it more likely that the child will be able to connect to it. And you may be pleased to learn something from this episode as well. And that's great. Show your pleasure because you want your child to experience that pleasure as well. And then there's sleep. Now, at the moment, many families are facing a lot of disruption, but it's really important as much as possible for a child to keep their daily structure with regular waking times, regular learning sessions and regular bedtimes. Avoid late evening video games because we know that they disrupt deep sleep when your child's brain is replaying what they've learned during the day, making it more permanent. Lost or disrupted sleep has a doubly negative effect on learning. It makes it easier to lose completely what you've already learned, but it also makes you feel too sleepy to learn more the next day. Sleep really is essential for learning. So I would keep bedtimes, I am keeping bedtimes, on what would have been school nights as if they are school nights. 
But finally, this is not just about what's a benefit to your child. Supporting your child's learning can actually be very rewarding for an adult. Observing a child learning is incredibly, truly fascinating. Armed with just a few concepts, like the ones that I've mentioned, you'll be able to understand much more about your child's learning, how it happens and how you can support it. And that stands to be a great benefit to you and your family, not just now, but after this crisis has lifted. You can find out more about the science behind how we learn with our quick guide for parents. We're keen to find out more about the questions you have about learning and to try to address as many of these as we possibly can in future videos. You can find the guide and post your questions to us on the STEM Learning website and follow STEM Learning for our responses.